Jesus Christ. <laughs> it has been a very long time, so let's recap. I feel like I haven't done this in ages. So, about seven years ago, I got this S13, and it has been a absolute fucking journey. Sorry about audio, the neighbor is cutting down a tree. When I got this car, it was completely stock with just coilovers and an exhaust. Oh, that light decided to work. In stock KA. So, I owned the car like that for about a year, year and a half, I believe, before I pulled the KA out for a 1UZ. Ever since then, the car's had a couple different renditions of it. And when the car made the most progress, I actually lived in a house where I had a garage all to myself. And then about three or four years ago, I ended up moving and I no longer had a garage. It's been a struggle trying to find a place to keep the car stored, let alone have somewhere to work on it. But now I am using my little brother's garage and I'm finally able to make progress for the first time. So for the past like three or four years, the car has had no maintenance done to it unless absolutely necessary. Even all the way down to oil changes. Mostly because it leaked oil horribly out of front main seal, cam seals, valve cover gaskets, stuff like that. And I recently had somebody completely go through and fix all of the oil leaks. So now the car holds oil. But now I have a different issue. I literally just walked in on this. Power steering fluid. I've known that my rack has been shit in the bed for a little while now, but it really hasn't been so bad that it's actually a problem. It's just make sure to top it off every now and again. But now it's gotten to the point to where air is constantly getting in the system and I'm constantly getting, you know, the jitters going back and forth steering. Or if I park the car with the steering wheel cranked all the way to one side or the other, it'll leak out. I don't know why this leaked so bad. It's never leaked this bad before. But today we're going to start doing some maintenance. Finally, I'm gonna get the car jacked up. I'm going to get an oil change do some other stuff And then I can show you some of the other things that I've done to the car But first we need to get the car up and see what the fuck's going on with the power steering uh, What the fuck bro, so it looks like uh, yeah the seal right here for the rack on this side Just I guess completely shit the bed. I have no idea why it's just randomly leaked so much and I gotta clean this up I forgot how annoying it is to get a lowered car on all four jack stands. The rear, I got them on the subframe, kind of in a midpoint. And then if you see the ones way up front, for a normal 240, that's kind of sketchy. But, one thing that I did to this car a long time ago, where the normal lower core support is, normally if you jack up from that middle point, you can see that bolt right there, that's where you jack up from. If you jack up from there too much, it'll actually bend it upwards, and I did that, and it actually started to tear out of the frame rails. So I had a homie weld in, if I could see it, weld these into the frame rails on each side, and then welded the bar itself to the lower core support. So now it's a super structural place, even though it is a 240, so it does still, you know, flex. Around where the fender is, around that area, it's actually bending like this. You wouldn't think that of a car, but especially these old ratchet pieces of shit, they flex like crazy. That's what's causing all my problems. Well, both sides are leaking technically, but sadly I can't do anything about this today. Uh, I've known about this for a while, and I know the best thing to do right now is to actually ship your rack off to a guy called Sparky Built in Texas. He does it for like 450 bucks, he fully rebuilds and powder coats everything, makes it look all nice, seals it and whatnot. And that's another reason why I've never ran boots, which is also why it's probably leaking so much. I never ran boots because this rack's always leaked. So it was pointless to just fill boots up. But uh, whenever I get this rebuilt, I will be putting boots on this car. I have not changed this oil in probably, it's been over a year. I stopped changing the filter after it started leaking so bad that I had to top the oil off every single time I drove it, it would be scary low on oil. But I'm gonna do the oil change and the main reason why I have it up on all fours is I actually have to bleed the brakes because I finally did something I tried to do a long time ago, and that's upgrade my rear brake pads. I tried ordering these once before, and after like six months, they just sent me the money back. I never tried again. But this time, I gave a call up to TF Works and asked if they had them in stock, and they said yes. And they're like, which ones do you want, though? Found out, Project Mew came out with a new version of the D1s. If you see there, it says Extreme. If you've been into S chassis for any you know, amount of time, you've probably seen 
Project Mew brake pads, or brake systems in general. Uh, they have a series called the D1 series, where they're rear brake pad specific, and they are meant specifically for locking up the brakes. It's not like a normal race pad where it's meant to constantly take high heat and not lose its, you know, abilities, I guess. Uh, this is meant to solely lock it up. I've heard of a lot of people having some really good luck with it, so I'm giving it a try. I started the process of installing these a couple days ago, and I actually had a caliper lock up on me completely. So I had to order a new caliper, and then yesterday I got that swapped in, and it is all good to go. And the handbrake works so well. But on the drive, there was one moment where the handbrake went up but didn't do anything, and then after that it kept working. So I think there might still be air bubbles in it. I only bled the rears, so I'm going to bleed all four today. But i got to wait until somebody gets here to help me. You can definitely tell I haven't done this in a long time. Lens is fucking dirty as shit. I forgot my microphone. Looks like my little brother did a oil change on his Miata, and I don't have any old uh, oil containers to dump this, so I need to start looking for water bottles and shit. Forgot how fucking sketchy that shit is. That's how much oil's in a Miata. We got this bitch all cleaned out so I can get a bit of an idea of what the oil looks like that is in there right now. And then, what I'm running at, for no fucking particular reason, Valvoline 530 synthetic. And then, I uh, couldn't get a good filter, so we're gonna hope this K&N does alright. I don't think I've ever ran it before. The engine bay of this thing's pretty much looked the same ever since the swap. Um, this side, fairly, you know, empty and whatnot. This side is, uh... All the unfinished wiring that I'm too scared to touch. But for anybody who doesn't know, uh, this is a 1U ZFE. I pulled this out of a 1990 Lexus LS400. It had about 400,000 miles on it, pretty much. And uh, pretty much had nothing done to it. It has never been taken care of its entire life. Every seal was bad, never got maintenance done to it. And then I recently got the timing belt and water pump done whenever I had him reseal the engine. Before this entire like bottom part of the oil pan was pretty much so caked that I had no idea what half the color of the engine was to be honest. And now it's dry. And that's where the oil filter is on a 1UZ. It's amazing. You can do it from the top when it's in an S chassis. Ah! Oh that worked out really well. It fell right into a corner. That is black. <laughs> Yikes. I wiped this off before I drained this. Um, it was pretty gross in there. <laughs> but uh, I'm waiting for things to finish filling up so I can get the level proper. And in the meantime, uh, like I said, this is my little brother's garage. He's never really been able to do much with the garage, and he's kind of had to use it for storage and boxes and stuff. So I've been helping him kind of like consolidate things down. And we started over here, got some stuff cleaned up. We can go out this door now, and having this airflow come through is beautiful. But we got some more boxes to get rid of and whatnot, but it's looking nicer. All right, and after a little bit of work, got that side cleaned up and got all of this cleaned up. There's so much fucking space in here. You could literally, if the garage was completely empty, you could fit like six Miatas in this bitch. <laughs> well, this turned into more of a shop cleaning day than a working on the 240 day. The biggest issue that we have in this garage right now is not enough light. But I can show you a little closer look at these brake pads. D1 Spec Extreme. These things lock like crazy. Ooh, did not, not notice that. So my handbrake has always been super stretched out. It's never worked well. I would have to already be drifting and be sideways for the handbrake to work. If I pulled it driving straight, it would hardly slow down. Uh, when I test drove these, I was just cruising at like 60 and just clutched in and barely yanked and it locked them up like a hydro. So uh, 150 bucks instead of uh, like a couple hundred bucks to do a hydro. I, I will take it, I will absolutely take that. Okay, new day, we have some new things to do on the agenda. I have a drift event in two days, three days, and I need to knock a couple things out real quick. One of the first things being, I want to paint the headlight plastics, like around the buckets, not the actual top piece, just this uh, 
just these guys right here because I scuffed them up a while back and uh, never got around to actually painting them. So I picked up some, uh, some trim and bumper paint. Hopefully this will be the look that I'm going for because I've seen those painted in gloss and they don't look very good. So we're gonna try this. And while I'm waiting for those to dry to do the second and third coat, I've got a couple other small things I can do real quick. One of them is the bolts on my steering wheel. If you can see, uh, the very bottom one is not like the others. It's a, it's a button head instead of a flat head and is also the wrong color. So I've brought these. I have a set of black flat heads and then also a set of silver. I think I might do the silver. I don't... Uh, I have silver in there right now, and uh, with a wood wheel and a silver face, I think silver will work best with that, so I'm going to toss these in real quick. Something small like this might seem kind of like dumb and stupid to be worried about, but when you think about it, when you're driving, that is the first thing that is in your sight, and I would constantly look at the fucking wrong bolt on the bottom every single time I drove this car. So now I've got them swapped over for nice hardware that matches. So, done with that. All right, another thing that seems like it doesn't matter is uh, this hole in my trunk, the, the drain hole. I pulled that plug out of it a long time ago because my trunk seals are bad. And so I just had water collecting and it rusted my trunk out a bit. You can see I fixed it once before, but it's coming back again. Well, now that the car is parked indoors, I don't really have to worry about that nearly as much. And I'm having an even bigger issue of things falling out of my trunk through this hole or a lot of debris getting into the trunk because of the hole. And I still have that plug. I believe this is the right plug. So I'm going to try to toss this in. I remember it was a nightmare to get out, so I assume it's going to be a nightmare to get back in. Not terrible as I remember, but it was still a pain in the dick. But, things will stop falling out of my fucking trunk. Knocking out more stuff. If you could see here, my bumper is flared out super far on the bottom end, like down there. Whenever you look on this side, it fits with the body line. And like, right, like sticks into the tire just a little bit, and everything looks fine on this side. This side's just way too flared out. Um, I think one of the main reasons is, remember this is a KBD bumper, which I not a big fan of these. It's all bolted in except for on the corners, just in case if I push it in a little bit, it'll just snap the uh, the zip tie instead of ripping a bolt out of a metal fender, because I still run metal, <laughs> as you can see there. Uh, well, I only have one zip tie at the top here, but normally on most bumpers, you'll utilize this other hole down here too. I never did, so it can be able to move around, but I'm going to zip a little hole right here and run a zip tie over to it, and I'm not going to suck it in all the way, but I can kind of adjust it using the zip tie. It'll pull the bumper in a little bit, it'll fit where it should be, and it also kind of lifts the front end, you can't tell, but it lifts the front end up just a little bit. So I need to make a little hole. Matches this side a whole lot more. And obviously, it's not perfect fitment for one, if you could see my headlights all tilted from my core support being bent. And the mounting location right here kind of forces a gap that I really don't care enough to fix. <laughs> but that looks so much better. Now I just need to find a way to get rid of the smile. It's just right there in the middle of sagging and I can't figure out a good way to lift it back up. The last thing before I toss those headlight things back in and call it a day, uh, there was an accidental purchase that I made. <laughs> I was looking at wheels, I was about to buy two more square G6s and 17s, that's what I run in the rear, and I was looking at the price of those and I was looking at the price of grabbing two random wheels off a of Kruber, 
and I was trying to get to the final price after tax and shipping and it seemed like a set of wheels that I was kind of interested in were about as expensive as buying two new square G6s and I went to go see the exchange rate and I did not realize I was on the final page and I accidentally bought them and they got here from Japan in three days which was fucking insane but uh, they actually turned out pretty cool. These are Work VS MXs, or VS Mesh, if you want to call them that. And they are 17 by 8 plus 35, 25? I can't remember. It's a 2 inch lip. And they're obviously 3 piece, and they are not welded. They are actually siliconed. So I can easily pop these lips off, put some 4 inch lips on it, and it would look a lot like my Weds, which they are the same exact design, same same style, just uh, these ones have a center cap, which they did not come with center caps, and if you've ever tried to find these, they're fucking impossible, but there's a guy that sells a 3D print render of the caps, and so I got somebody printing them right now. And with these wheels with a spacer, the uh, fitment's pretty solid. The car still needs to be lowered, but uh, for like a functional fitment right now, this looks fucking great. Pretty happy with the finished outcome. It was about what I was looking for with more of like a satin look to it, but it's for some reason uh, not adhering completely or it's not completely dry because there's some patchy parts to it, but regardless it looks better than it did. I mean they turned out alright. A lot better than it was. They used to be a super bright like gray from being sanded down. It looks a lot better. It'd be a whole lot better if it didn't have a Forrest Whitaker eye over here. My fucking car looks like he lead sings for a day to remember, but once that's fixed, front end's actually going to look pretty good. Just, it's got a little curvy smile, but over there is fixed. Headlight things are painted. Front end's coming together. And look at the fitment on this side. It's fucking... <laughs> it's fucking tight. <laughs> well, I think that's about it for today. I can't think of anything else I can really do that is going to benefit me for Midnight Madness on Friday. Um, car's pretty much ready to go. Just got to throw some tools in it and head that way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and have a good night. <laughs>